So you asked me about some of the most important challenges of cybersecurity. Let me point out uh, two very important challenges. Uh, the first one has to do with the fact that uh, this is a domain of conflict that is offensively superior. Uh, what that means is that at least with respect to the most advanced uh, capabilities and adversaries, right, uh, they will always find a way generally to penetrate your systems. Right? And so what that means is that it implies the reversal of traditional security theory, which assumed that uh, policy uh, succeeds if you're able to keep your adversary outside of your prized home terrain. But in the context of cybersecurity, you have to assume as a starting premise of security policy that at least your most advanced adversaries are already living inside your most important uh, computer infrastructures without you knowing about it. So that's the first basic challenge. Uh, a second basic challenge of cybersecurity is that the, uh, so far all cyber attacks, even the most consequential ones, uh, have fallen below the traditional uh, threshold of an act of war. And at least here in the West, we're quite good traditionally at dealing with situations that are clearly warlike or clearly peacelike. Right? But the fact is that the, uh, even the most consequential cyber attacks do not meet the traditional uh, threshold of war, which implies a significant level of physical destruction and loss of life. So our adversaries in places like Russia understand this better than we do, which is that uh, firstly you can cause significant social, political, economic harm through a cyber attack, but secondly, so long as the method of the attack does not imply uh, overt violence, you're most likely to get away with it precisely because the activity is not right, a classical act of war. So what we are dealing with is a form of activity that is between these traditionally binary notions of war and peace, and it's a space of action that I label unpeace.